gate in the well. It was originally called the Watergate, but they changed the name to Traitor's Gate during the Elizabethan period because of mainly all the Tudor traitors that came through those gates. Among them, no less than four queens of England. Queen Anne Boleyn, Queen Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey, the uncrowned Queen of Nine Days, and the young Princess Elizabeth Tudor. High dignitaries of the church and elder statesmen were no exception. Those and many more poor unfortunate souls would have travelled down the River Thames from the trials at the Guild Hall or the Palace of Westminster, passed through these gates and climbed these stony steps. Here they'd be met by guards and escorted through the archways and off to their cells to await whatever fate had in store for them. For some it would be a short journey to their place of execution. Behind you you can see the infamous Bloody Tower. Originally called the Garden Tower, it was changed to the Tower of Blood again during the Elizabethan period to commemorate the many tragic events that have happened within. Of them all, surely the saddest must be the alleged murders in 1483 of the two boy princes. Edward V, the uncrowned king, and his younger brother Richard, Duke of York, aged just 12 and 9 respectively. They were supposed to have been looked after by their uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. In June of that year, he declared those two boys to be illegitimate, and in July, declared himself to be the king, Richard III. In August, we're told by Shakespeare and Thomas More, the two men stole into those boys' bedrooms with murder in their heads. That they murdered those boys by putting pillows over their faces and suffocating them. And then a little bodies are bundled down the steps leading into the Wakefield Tower, hidden beneath some stones. The next day, they were secretly removed by an unknown priest and taken to the south side of the White Tower, where they were buried. And that's where they remained undisturbed for 191 years, until workmen carrying out some restoration work found an old trunk. They got all excited. They thought they found some long lost treasure. Imagine how they must have felt as they swept away the dusty cobwebs. What was going through their minds as they smashed open the old padlock? Imagine their disgust when they lifted the lid and found the skeletal remains of two small boys. Experts of the day declared them to be indeed the missing princes. They were taken down to Westminster Abbey and reinterred in Innocent's Corner, which is where they remain to this day. Another man to spend time up there was Sir Walter Raleigh. You heard of him? Sir Walter Raleigh was a great navigator. He was a pirate. He was also a botanist and a historian. And he spent 13 and a half years up there, all and off. 13 and a half years. And every single day that he was up there, they made his life an absolute misery. They locked him in there with his wife and kids. <laughs> Occasionally you can still see her. <laughs> now, Sir Walter Raleigh was eventually executed on the orders of James I and when his head was cut off his wife managed to retrieve it. And she put it in a red velvet bag and carried it wherever she went till the end of her days. Twenty-nine years later. You are surrounded by an awful lot of gory gruesome history ladies and gentlemen. And if you're from the British Empire, oh. all these histories yours. <laughs> and if you're an American, yeah. could have been yours if only you'd paid your taxes. <laughs> <laughs>